There are a few different ways of showing statistical significance in time frequency plots or time course plots. And in this video, I just want to talk about a few of the ways and I will argue why it's better to show more rather than less data. Now, that's not a very controversial statement. I don't think there are many people who would disagree. So what you're looking at here is abstracted data. So it kind of doesn't matter what this line represents. You can imagine that this is time and so this is a time course of activity, or you know, you could imagine that this is frequency, so this is some spectrum. That part actually doesn't matter. The point is that we have some data, and this dashed line here corresponds to p less than 0.05, and you know, you can assume that this is appropriately corrected for multiple comparisons and so on. The point is, in this plot, I'm showing all of the data that we have here, and I'm showing the line the dashed line, which indicates a significance threshold. And here I'm showing, you know, we start from the same data, but here I'm just blanking out all of the non-statistically significant time points or frequency points, whatever these data correspond to. Now, in a very strict statistical sense, these two plots are the same because in a very strict statistical sense, it is not possible to interpret anything below this line. These values don't matter. They are uninterpretable in a very strict sense. So if they are uninterpretable, you might as well remove them completely from the plot. However, I think you and I can agree that this is a better way to show the data. And why is that? This plot gives you a much clearer picture. This gives much more information about what's really happening in the data. Furthermore, this thing, you know, this looks pretty respectable. This is a pretty respectable size bump over here. Now, it's not considered statistically significant at this threshold, but maybe this, you know, whatever this data reflects, maybe this is really relevant for someone else's research project. Maybe this is relevant for someone else's hypothesis. It is possible that this is a real effect, but the experiment or the analyses were optimized to find this effect and not optimized to find this effect. Furthermore, it could be that this effect has high theoretical relevance, even if it's not statistically significant, this may be important for whatever theory or you know, set of way of thinking that we are working with here. And again, here we have no idea what's going on below this threshold. So therefore, this is a much better way to show data compared to this. Okay, likewise, we can have time frequency plots and we can indicate statistical significance by drawing contour lines around these significant regions like what you see here. Or what we can do is mask out all of the non-significant pixels in this time frequency plot. Again, in a very strict statistical perspective, all of these pixels are totally uninterpretable. Every pixel in this map, except for the ones outlined here in black, is uninterpretable because they are not statistically significant. However, so that would you know argue for this representation. However, I'm sure you agree that this illustrates the dynamics in the brain in a much clearer and more sensible way, more interpretable way. This is also important for time frequency results because, as I mentioned in the very, very beginning of this course, when I talked about how to interpret time frequency plots, I told you that an important feature to look for in time frequency plots, in particular, if you want to link your time frequency results to oscillations, if you want to interpret these findings as reflecting oscillations, then you need to see that these features of the data are limited both in time and also in frequently, or certainly in frequency and possibly also in time. Now, when we look at this plot, we have no idea what is going, you know, how restrictive this blob, this feature actually is. This shows us the significant region, but it's possible that this effect is actually broadband. It could be that there is an effect that goes from three hertz, or whatever is the lowest frequency, from three hertz all the way up to 30 hertz. And it's just this huge column. It's just this big tube of redness. And it just happens to be that the uh, pixels down here had, maybe there was less variance down here because there's more smoothing. So therefore these were significant, but all of the rest of these uh, pixels all up here did not meet this threshold. Okay, so the general point here, 
is that whenever possible, you should show as much of the results as you can, and then you can indicate statistical significance using contours or, you know, another option, which I'm not showing here, but another possibility would be to make the rest of this map semi-transparent so that you can still see the dynamics here, but they're a bit transparent, so they're harder to see, and then only what is significant is really clear and opaque.